Hi folks, and welcome to Truck King. Today we're going to discuss heavy duty trucks, but they are not all created equally, and that's exactly what we're going to break down. Over here on my right, that's a Chevy Silverado 2500, and on my left is the Chevy Silverado 3500. So really, what is the difference going from a three quarter ton up to a one ton? That's what we're going to dig into right now. Let's start by looking at what is the same because honestly a lot of things between a 2500 and a 3500 are identical and one of the ones here is the powertrain. This is a 6.6 .6 liter turbo diesel. It makes 470 horsepower, 975 pound feet of torque and that is sent through a 10 speed automatic and yes it doesn't matter which truck you get, those numbers remain. So the other thing that is the same between these two trucks are many of the dimensions. Now when we're talking exterior dimensions, the length and the width is identical. Now of course you can get it in different specs, but if you're comparing short bed to short bed, long bed to long bed, everything is the exact same. The only exterior dimension that changes is the height. The 3500 is about half an inch to an inch taller than the 2500, but besides that, the exterior dimensions are the same and so are the interior dimensions. The driver's leg room, headroom, shoulder room, the rear passenger's leg room, headroom, shoulder room, the exact same. So you're not getting any more space or size by going for the 3500 over the 25. Another one of the similarities, and I think this surprises people, are the brakes. When you go for a 3500 over a 2500, you're not getting bigger brakes. The brake rotors on a single rear wheel truck, like we have here, are 14 inches in the front and 14.1 inches in the back. So brake size is identical. Now on the trucks we have here today, our red 3500 is an LTZ, so it's specced with 18 inch wheels. Our silver high country is specced with 20s. Now you could get 20s on this 3500 if you wanted them, so this is just a spec difference. But it's one thing to pay attention to when you're ordering your truck is what size tires and wheels you're getting. Now I, I mentioned tires there too, I have to say just about what we're looking at today. Our 2500 has Bridgestone Blizzak winter tires, those were put on by the manufacturer, those aren't going to come stock. The stock tires though, over here on our 3500, is a set of Michelin LTX AT2s which in my opinion is actually a fairly aggressive tire for this truck and I appreciate seeing that come straight from the factory. Now another similarity here, fuel tank size. Again, just because you stepped up to 3500 doesn't mean you're getting a monster fuel tank. When you get a diesel long bed like this truck right here, it's just over 130 liters of capacity and that does not change 2500 to 3500. Hey everybody, listen, you've heard us talk about the giddy ups here on the Truck King channel. So this is a new set that I've got in my truck. Now these, unlike the synthetic simple ones that we sold out of last summer, are handmade, all leather, hand stitched. These are unique, these are one of a kind, all made by John out there in Alberta, Canada. And if you're interested in these for your truck, all you have to do is reach out to us at hey at Truck King .ca, that's H-E-Y at truckking.ca. We'll send you photos, prices, and delivery information. Do that soon. As you've seen so far, a lot of things are the same between these two trucks. So now you're saying, well, what are the differences? Well, there's a bunch of them. And to be totally honest, a lot of the differences here have more to do with classification and numbers than they actually do with physical differences. But there are some physical differences. And in my opinion, the largest one is back here with the rear suspension. So over here on our 2500, and we can get down here and take a look. Here's our leaf spring pack. You got one, two, three, four, five leaf springs right there. And this is a Z71 truck, but this truck will have these sort of standard 2500 shocks on it. Now over here on the 3500, 
We can get down and count. This leaf pack is the same. So you got one, two, three, four, five, but of course then you get six, seven. And you'll notice that gap right there. Those top two leaf springs, I would call them helper springs. They're not gonna engage. They're not gonna be used until you drop weight on the back of this truck. And then when you go for the 3500, you're also getting unique shocks to make sure they can handle the weight as well. So the suspension is absolutely different, but here's the kicker everybody. If you order a 2500 with the max tow package, you get the exact same suspension as a 3500. And that's why these things get confusing because if you have a 2500 with max tow, you have a 3500 in everything but name. But now we have to get into the numbers and the classification because that's what really sets these two apart. I have a little bit more to add here because I reached out to Chevy just to clarify that last statement that a 2500 with max tow is the same as a 3500 and they did confirm it and actually I got even more information that I want to share with you now. So first of all, when you step up to 2500 with max tow or a 3500, you do get higher capacity axles which are included to make sure you can get those larger gross axle weight ratings. Secondly, the frame is slightly different on a 2500 max tow or 3500 versus the standard 2500. The 3500 frame gets unique gussets, unique spring mounts, and one extra front suspension cross member. That being said though, the frame rails and thicknesses are identical from 2500 to 35. Then finally, the ring gear in the differentials are upgraded to 12 inch units when you go for the 2500 with max tow or a 3500 and that larger ring gear should just help the truck deal with those high weight loads. Before Steve starts throwing a whole bunch of numbers at you, I just gotta put one thing out there now because you have to look at everything he's gonna say with an eye towards registration, licensing, and annual safety inspections. And I say this because every state and every province is different in how they register trucks, how they tax trucks, and what is required of them. Some make very clear distinctions between commercial and personal. Others only base it on weight, whether you're commercial or personal. Some have lower numbers in terms of what's considered a personal vehicle versus a commercial vehicle. Others are much higher than that. Some need annual inspections if you're over a certain weight category. Others don't have any at all. So understanding this and better yet being confused by this means that the manufacturers have for the longest time offered different GVWRs on their trucks, which don't necessarily conform to the engineering, they conform to licensing regulations so that you as an owner can go in and say, I'm not a commercial truck, I don't want to pay three times how much for, for, a, for a license plate as a car does, so you know what, give me the lower GVWR. And in some cases, such as Ram, for instance, on their 2500, they won't go over 10,000 because that seems to be the threshold pretty much everywhere. So now if I've completely confused you, don't feel bad because we're confused all the time by this stuff. Just remember, as I said, most of these numbers have to do with registrations. So that being said, Steve, please continue to confuse everybody. Now we'll dig into some of those numbers that dad was talking about. The first thing I want to mention are the tow ratings. Before I get into that, let me, like always, shout out to General Motors for the best sticker in the industry right down here that gives you VIN specific towing and payload numbers on every single truck they sell. It just makes, it takes all the guesswork out of it. It makes it so simple to find out what your rating is. So on this 3500, as it sits here today, we have 20,000 pounds of conventional towing and 20, just over 21,000 pounds of fifth wheel towing. It's 21,510 pounds off of the fifth wheel. So with those numbers in mind, now we can look at the sticker on the 2500 as we have it today. And you'll see the numbers are slightly lower, 18,500 conventional 
and 19,100 off the gooseneck. But again, here's where things get interesting. If you ordered that same 2,500 with the max tow packages, the tow ratings would be identical. 2,500 max tow and 3,500 both max out at 20,000 conventional and 21,510 off the gooseneck. So again, you're looking at the dealer going, these two trucks tow the exact same amount. What is the difference? And I'll tell you that the answer is GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating, but then on and above that, it is payload because with the higher GVWR, it allows you to carry more weight on your truck. So what are the payload numbers? Here on our 3,500, we have 3,873 pounds of payload and you'll see on the 2,500 that we have here today, it is just about a thousand pounds less. That thousand pounds is really one of the big differences here. And, and truly with someone like my dad who tows a massive fifth wheel, if you want to make sure all of your numbers are in spec, well, that thousand pounds makes a big difference. And it usually means that you're gonna be in your payload spec rather than over. Now you've seen that payload number, but like I mentioned, that's a result of the GVWR. So let me actually spit those numbers out at you. If you get a truck just like this, a long bed, four wheel drive, diesel, your GVWR comes in at 12,250 pounds. And then if you get the identical build on a 2500 with that max tow package, so tow ratings are the same, your GVWR is 11,000 350 pounds. So I think, I hope this point is coming across, but I'll try to drive it home here. If you have a 2500 with the max tow package, and then you have a 3500 that are spec'd the exact same, you essentially have the exact same truck, but the 2500 is going to have less payload. On paper, it's not going to be able to carry as much weight. And this is sort of what dad and I get frustrated with because so many trucks seem to be limited by the ratings, by the numbers, by the classifications, not by engineering. And that is especially true when it comes to Ram. We always go back to them because they have that hard cap at 10,000 pounds GVWR. And, and just to give you a sense, right? Chevy goes up to over 11,000 pounds and Ford will actually go up to 11,400 pounds on their F-250. So Chevy and Ford have kind of abandoned that 10,000 pound number because they realize the payload suffer because of it. So this is just one more of those things that when you're purchasing a truck, you have to try to pay attention to. What is the limiting factor? Is it actually engineering? Is it the physical truck I purchased? Or is it just the classification? And when it comes to 2,500 versus 3,500, a lot of the time, it's just in the classifications. All right, Dad, now we're out here driving around. We're in the 2500 High Country, and there's a whole bunch more things to discuss. I think we've gotten the main points out of the way, which are to say, you know, these trucks are pretty dang similar, 2500 to 3500. It's a, a lot to do with the numbers and the GVWRs, but another way that I think is gonna drive home the fact that they're similar is just the way that they drive. So that 3500, and if you guys didn't know this, that's dad's actual truck. We just bought it. You've been driving it for a month now, a little less, I guess. Yep. Um, so first of all, why don't you just talk to me about, do you feel any appreciable difference in the way they drive? And the other caveat is also that this is a shorter wheelbase. You have the long bed, this doesn't. But even still, what do you feel uh, drive-wise? Well, it's also Z71, so I'm suspecting that the shocks have a little more give. Correct. And that's actually the only thing I'm really feeling is that it's just a little tad softer in the back end, whereas my truck tends to sort of kick off the top of the bumps. Good, yeah, good point, but again, that is Z71, you know, versus non. I think that's really the difference there, but otherwise, let's face it, these trucks are the same, which is really weird to say because everybody kind of goes, oh, well, three quarter and a one ton, they've got to be different. Sure. They're different in how much weight they will accommodate. Sure. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite shocking. And of course, the other joke here is that this is the three-quarter ton, the high country, uh, mine is the one ton, it's LTZ. However, this is 10,000 bucks more yeah. than my truck. Yeah, and that's it. So on paper, this truck will tow less, it'll carry less payload, but it's more expensive. And then the question is why? Well, the answer is the interior. 
and now we can really dive into this. So, of course, this is a high country. This is top trim. This truck has everything Chevy possibly could throw at it. And then the one we're sitting in today also has a bunch of options added onto it as well. So, uh, I guess before we get into comparing it, just what do you think of, of this high country interior? Do you like the wood? Like the brown stitching? No, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, you know, the materials are nice. The, the, the color contrasts are nice. Um, but then so is my truck and honestly at first blush um, When I get into this truck for my truck, I say okay. Well, I don't have wood I got some fake stuff on the doors, right, and I don't have some of the perforated uh, insert Material yeah, but that's it everything else the layout the screens the dash everything else that I can see it's the same. It's all there. And, and, and you're absolutely right. I'll tell you the differences that I found, the big ones are head-up display here in the high country and the rear camera mirror here in the high country. But then as you pointed out, you can also get those in an LTZ. You just have to add on more packages. So we have a couple more features here, but the majority of what goes into this package is the way it looks. And this is why I said this in a previous video, the LTZ and generally around the entire industry, one step below the luxury truck is usually one of the more value focused trims because you're getting a lot of the features without sort of the luxury look, but that luxury look, you're, you're paying for that. So LTZ is, yeah, if you don't need the way this looks, that's the place to be. Yeah, and and because that's what we're talking about right now is just basically it's prices. I mean, it's already a lot of money, Sure. but nevertheless, I spent a lot of time on the configurator and really what I came away with was that I could get 95% uh, of what I wanted in the LTZ and yeah, I'm, I'm, I saved 10 grand, so like I'll take the 10 grand. Yep, no, I agree with the decision and of course it's totally subjective. It comes down to what's worth it to you. So if you want the style, it's here, but I agree, I would save the money on that as well. Now at the same time, I also got to throw in there that if there's certain things you want, Sometimes you really got to work at it with the configurator. Uh, for instance, I'm not a fan of sunroofs and it, I had a heck of a time trying to order my truck without a sunroof because they keep shoving it into these other packages, which I wanted less the sunroof. Yeah. So I finally managed to do it. Don't even ask me how, but uh, if you get to that point where there's a certain thing that you want and, or something you don't want, just keep working away at it. The biggest problem today is that everything is packages. And then all of a sudden, if you're like, well, I don't want that, and you delete it, then you lose 10 things that you did want. So there is a certain level of frustration there, but you can get to where you want to go if you keep whacking away at it. I would love to know how many 3500 LTZs exist without a sunroof, because I bet that truck is pretty rare because of it. I think I'm going to reach out to GM, see if they can put a number on it, because that's going to be a unicorn one day, the fact that you don't have a sunroof. Well, maybe so. <laughs> The other big reason, which we haven't said yet in this video, is that if you want the dually, you got to go 3500. And why would you get the dually? Well, once again, huge payload numbers. Also, just putting the power to the ground with more tires. And then the stability of that width really makes towing feel good. So, you know, we haven't talked about duallys, but you can't deny, of course, if you want it, you got to go 3500. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video, and hopefully now you understand more of the differences between 2500s and 3500s. And I think for me, it's clear. If you tow something really big quite often, like that big fifth wheel trailer back there, yeah, step up to the 3500 and don't worry about the numbers. But even if you tow something that big, not very often, 2500 will probably suit you well. So like usual, it's gonna come down to your usage case and how you want to put these trucks to work. But one thing is for sure, it doesn't matter which one you go with, these are capable pickup trucks and they're quite comfortable too for heavy duties. You know what, that's it for this one. Now please go below into the comments. Let me know what you think of this video, everything we talked about. Hey, which one would you take? The Silverado 2500 or the 3500? Well, why don't you let us know down there? And then as always, hit like, hit subscribe, Subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.